anyone claiming that America's economy is in decline is peddling fiction. There, there's been some developments as far as the whole COVID-19 narrative is concerned. And Kamala Harris, you know, tried to hit the, the Trump administration as like the biggest blunder in modern American politics or something, their handling of the coronavirus and this whole pandemic. I can't help but think that if I were to run through all of the statistics that we have right now, the death rate, the number of infected, the, the, the age ranges of people that are dying from this, you know, you know things like that. If I were to go back in March and exp and tell them that these are the numbers we'd be looking at in October, that they would be ecstatic. I mean, remember how the doomsday scenarios they were talking about, millions of people dead, like best case scenario, two million people dead, and like it's going to have like a three, four percent fucking death rate and everything like that. Well, we've gotten some um, newly provided information from the CDC, your, your Center for Disease Control. The current best estimate of chances of dying if you get infected and your age is between 0 and 19, your probability of survival, so not your, chan your chance of dying, probability of survival, 99.9997%. Your chances of uh, probability of survival for 20 to 49, 99.98. Now, these are, uh, this is on average, right? 50 to 69, 99.5%. And over the age of 70, it drops to 94.6. Now, those are on average. That is the average fatality rate. It doesn't take into account comorbidities or anything like that. In Illinois, 86% of the deaths have been over the age of 60. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Now, in light of these numbers, and this goes to the, the whole point that Joe Biden likes to fucking ramble about and Kamala Harris, you know, we're going to trust science. We believe in science. We're going to listen to science. Okay, so um, over 7,000 scientists and doctors call for COVID herd immunity and an end to the lockdowns. This is from uh, Steve Watson via Summit News. Have signed a petition against coronavirus lockdown measures urging that those not at risk, not in the risk category, the, the numbers I just went over, should be able to get on with their lives as normal and that the lockdown rules in both the U.S. and U.K. are causing irreparable damage. They, uh, those who have signed include professors from the world's leading universities, Oxford University professor Dr. Sunetra, Sunetra Gupta was one of the authors of the open letter that was sent with the petition, along with Harvard University Dr. Martin Koldorf and Stanford's Dr. J. Bhattacharya. All right. I'm probably butchering those names. The petition dubbed the Great Barrington Declaration after the town in Massachusetts, where it was written, has been signed by close to 73,000 members of the public at the time of writing, as well as 4,700 medical and public health scientists and around 3,200 medical practitioners. So you're going to listen to these scientists, Joe, these medical professionals, Kamala. How about these? Do they, is this not the science that you're referring to? These aren't the authority figures that you're looking to for your cues for all your lockdown bullshit. I mean, 99.9997 a survival rate, and those people have to stay cooped up in their house, um, not go to school, not live their lives. 99.95 can't go out to work, can't you know, can't resume any any normalcy or anything like that. You just get to stay home and maybe visit your old, some old people. Get locked in the house with your parents and uh, you end up getting the virus and giving it to them, and then they get sick, right? I mean, this is just the the approach to this is so is so ridiculous and and just lacking in nuance that you know we have to treat somebody who's in. It, it, over the age of 70 with underlying conditions, the same way we treat, some, treat somebody who's 18 or even just different parts of the same state. Like I mentioned, Illinois. There's a big difference between Chicago and Southern Illinois and things like that. Like this is just, ugh. This is the, the worst aspect of government. It's just everything is a nail and they have a hammer and it's all one size fits all. This 
blanketed uh, solution to things. It just, just ends up making everything so much worse. But I will wait. I will wait with bated breath to hear what Joe Biden has to say about this, about these scientists, about these doctors who there, there are thousands of them apparently that disagree with his mandate to, to lock everything down, that these lockdowns are actually detrimental. There's a lot of evidence that more people are dying from other things because of these lockdowns than, than anybody ever would have from the coronavirus. You know, and Joe Biden is and the, the Democrats are positioning themselves as, you know, I'm my day one, I'm going to make a national mask mandate and we're going to lock everything down. I can't imagine being more out of touch with the vast majority of Americans that are just fucking over this. They're just over it. They want to get on with their lives. And a national mask man. Yeah, that's a great idea for, a, for an election uh, campaign. I'm going to make you wear something on your face until I, you say until I say you could take it off. And I mean, of course, the implication is if they can make you wear a mask, they can make you do all kinds of stuff. If you don't think that a Joe Biden presidency is going to mandate a vaccine, I, you got another thing coming. I mean, they asked Kamala Harris about it. She's like, well, if Trump comes up with it, I'm not going to take it. But if the scientists do, then yes, I'll be the first in line. She's like, oh, yeah, Trump's going to come up with a vaccine. Okay. But you, you know that if a Joe Biden presidency or any Democratic presidency comes up with this, they're, they're going to vaccinate you. And they're going to force you to get a vaccination just like they're going to force you to wear a mask. Uh, not that the Trump you know, administration might do that as well. Trump is infamous for caving to pressure from the the left, from media, things like that. You know, he talks a big game, but when he gets down to brass tacks, he usually caves on his position. So, you know, he might come up with a way of mandating it. I, I It's definitely far less likely than it is under a Joe Biden administration, where it's just so obvious that Democrats want to control every aspect of your lives, everything. The, the only thing they don't want to control is whether or not you get an abortion. A- anything other than that, they are, they are hands-on. They, they'll microchip you. They'll vaccinate you. It, you won't be able to travel if you don't get a vaccination. You won't be able to get a job if you don't get a vaccination. You got to wear your mask everywhere. I just saw the governor of California, Gavin Newsom. He, he wants a uh, And I swear to God, this is a real fucking thing. It sounds like this would be something you'd see on Saturday Night Live or something like that. The governor's office says to wear a mask in between bites at a restaurant. Okay, in between bites. Now, I thought it was ridiculous when I went back to Chicago for a couple weeks before I couldn't take it anymore. And I went to a place and the new rule there was you have to put your mask on anytime the waitress or waiter comes to your table to like, Take your order, ask how everything is going. You know, hey, uh, how's everything going? Can I refill your water? Oh, you got to put your mask back on every time. That- now, I thought that was fucking stupid. Now, this, every in between bites of food, you're, you're taking your mask off and putting it on. Is there anything more fucking ridiculous than that? I, I mean, at this point, they just have to be fucking with us. 